one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is because I'm a little bit fascinated. And I should probably say, people need to know how we met. Right. I'll, I'll just say this. You are not the first person I met at Social Media Marketing World to be on the podcast, but you're certainly one of the closest in terms of friendship because- Thanks, man. Hey, no, no problem. Because what's really cool about Social Media Marketing World is that it forces people who may be active in social media but aren't active face-to-face into a venue where they can be face-to-face with people who understand what they're talking about, what they're interested in, and what they want to learn. So when you get together, there tends to be a great amount of commonality. And and that's certainly what I found with you. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's fun because it's my second year, right? It was this was my second year. And I only knew, I knew Bear and I knew Carlos, right? But you know, I, I, I haven't met the girls and obviously you last year, maybe just, you know, flew by each other, whatever. Yeah. And it's, you know, for me, it's very different that the whole mentality is when you have a conference in the US versus when you have a conference in Europe, it's completely different. How people so? are different. The people are more open in the US, I would say. They're more friendly, even if it's fake. Some people say, ah, this is, you know, the people are fake. They don't really care. How are you? How are you doing? I don't care. Still, it, it gives you a good feeling. But I genuinely think that the people who go to these conferences in the US are not fake friendly, like the target cashier will be. They're actually interested in you and they actually care about, you know, other social media people, wherever they're coming from, because we all are super different in terms of our stories. You are, I am, Bea, Carlos, we all do, we, we all connect through social media, literally speaking, and through the, the business. But then we're, we're also so different. Yet we have this, uh, they have this great, great group of people or this great team. You know, it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome, I think. Yeah. And I want to say to listeners that the Bea that uh, Balash is talking about is Bea Pola Boker, who was on the podcast probably by the time you listen to this, maybe uh, five to 10 episodes ago. And she's from New Zealand, but she's originally from Hungary. Like and me. Balash is in Germany right now, but originally from Hungary. So yeah. I've got these all these Hungarian friends that I met in spite of the fact they don't live in hunger anymore. And I met them in San Diego. So how small a world is it when you are active on social media and you get out of your individual box to go meet people? That's how small it can be. And, you know, that's why I get to have fascinating conversations with people like Balash. And I have to say that last year when I went to the conference for the first time, I did not know Bea because she registered as someone from New Zealand. So when you, you search for the countries, she would come up as, you know, New Zealand. But then she searched for Hungary and she found the people and I was registered as German. So I don't know how, but she somehow found me because she was searching, actively searching for the Hungarians. And she somehow found me and, and came to a party and, and or, or somebody introduced us to each other. I can't even remember. But it was funny because she wouldn't find me because I'm in Germany. I wouldn't know that she's a Hungarian girl because she's in New Zealand. Yet we found this connection, maybe through Carlos. I'm not even sure. Right. And the Carlos he's talking about is Carlos Latore of Santiago, Chile. So we were rolling with a crew that had one American, me, a German or a Hungarian German, a Hungarian New Zealander, and a couple of women from Lima, Peru, and then Carlos from Chile. So it was this international posse, I like to think of it as. And we just had a great time. And I really, really loved doing that. And one of the things I want to point to is the fact that a couple of episodes ago, Don Stanley, who is a university instructor here in Madison, Wisconsin, who deals with social media, brought up the point that if you wear a University of Wisconsin sweater or t-shirt or sweatshirt, with a badger on it here in Madison, it's like, yeah, well, everybody does. And you would never talk to those people. But if you wore one of those at social media marketing world in San Diego, I guarantee you, you'd find everybody who's ever gone to UW Madison or is from Wisconsin, or maybe has family in Wisconsin, because you're literally putting out one signifier that allows people to look at you and go, oh, we should talk. And I want to talk about something that relates directly to what you do, Balash. Mm -hmm. And that is the fact that one of the days at Social Media Marketing World, you didn't make a big deal out of it, but I saw this thing on your wrist that probably cost more than any of the cars I've ever owned in my (laughs) life. And I'm talking about a wristwatch that was... I don't know. It wasn't rose gold, but it was something. I think it was was rose gold and it was very... uh, Maybe. I'm not sure. It was very expensive. Yeah. It Mm -hmm. was very expensive. 
Well, I noticed that and I looked down at my my one series Apple Watch. Oh my God, he's showing me <laughs> he's showing it to me on camera. And let me tell you, it is swanky. And meanwhile, as I said, I'm looking at my first version of the Apple Watch going, yeah, well, I, I can get notifications on it. So it's pretty cool, I have to say. Yeah, to, to me cool it's watch. very valuable. But yeah. the whole point I wanted to make was that to anybody who's a watch collector or into watches they see that on your wrist and they'll walk across the room to talk to you about it because you're sharing one part of who you are, who you legitimately are. And they just might be absolutely, I must talk to you about it because I share that interest. And, and I should say, Balash, why don't you walk us through your career or where you are right sure. now? Because it's really fascinating to someone like me. Yeah. So basically in a nutshell, I studied English in Hungary. And then uh, after I graduated, I worked in the hospital, in the hotel industry. So absolutely not connected to English. My diploma thesis, I wrote about the controversial life of James I of England and VI of Scotland. So it was a very, you know, deep, deep into history. But then I, I, I stopped dealing with English, so to speak, in such a scale. And I, and I worked in hotels. And basically through the industry, I found myself in Scotland years after graduation, four years after graduation. And I worked in the industry and I was about to reach 30 and might sound a bit romantic, but I thought, okay, I'm doing something I don't quite like. It's on social hours. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. And I want to do something that I like on the side. So I've always been interested in watches. You know, some people interested in guitars, like your studio is full of awesome yeah, guitars. But, exactly. You know, some people in cars, I was interested in watches. And I always was a consumer of watch magazines and blogs, but I thought, eh, I have the, the education in English. Maybe I can write for these blogs. So I sent a cold email to one of my favorite blogs and I said, I don't know who, you know, how many you guys have in the team or what do you want or you need a writer, but here I am. And so the guy said, send me a, an article and we see about that. And I sent him two articles and long story short, two days after my 30th birthday, my first article came out on Fratello Watches, which is now Fratello Magazine. And I'm still there after five years. And we are one of the major watch online and sometimes print publications in the watch industry. And I, I started writing for them in July when my birthday is in July. And in November, I got to the point where, where it was just so busy working in, in, in hospitality and write the articles, do the images, edit them, and so on and so forth. And I had an, a conversation with Robert Young, who's our editor-in-chief and the founder of the, the Watch magazine. And I said, dude, I, I can't do this. It's just, it's just too much. And he said, you know, why don't you send your CV to Chrono24 in Germany? They always look for new talent, new people, and you know, why not? Maybe. So I sent another cold email to Chrono24 in Germany. I said, here I am, a Hungarian guy who's got an education in English, working in Scotland in hospitality, but I know watches and uh, I guess maybe you could use me. And then again, an email came back. Sure, let's have a phone call. Let's have a Skype interview, another phone call. Let's fly to Germany to have a, a Obertag, as they say, like a trial day. And at the end of the trial day, they, they hired me. And so I, that was December that year, 2014. And 2015, February the 2nd, I started working for Chrono24. And two years after I initially started with Chrono, I was moved to the marketing department and then I started working with social media. Okay. I just want to back up and say for listeners who might be saying, why are you talking to this Hungarian who lives in Germany on the nonfiction brand podcast? And I'll point to what you just said and say, that's why, because literally you did everything you're supposed to do in getting a college education, getting a degree, going into a business, working your way up. And right before age 30, you said, wait a minute, this is not me or it's not fully me. Absolutely not me. It was absolutely not what I, what I enjoyed. I mean, I, I thought, come on, life has, has something better for me than, than, you know, working in hotels and restaurants and events and organizing functions. And, you know, apparently life did because it turned out pretty good. So what did you do? You didn't look for a for an adjacent industry that's close enough and decide, well, maybe I can do this and be a little bit more fulfilled. You took a step back and these are my words, but I see you nodding your head. You took a step back and said, what do I really love? And that love happened to be wristwatches, high quality. And these aren't just watches. These are high quality Swiss timepieces yeah. that Chrono24, which touts itself as the world's largest watch market, 
you can yeah. go on there and get a $40,000 Rolex that's used and it could be coming from Bangkok, Thailand. Absolutely. From a certified dealer. You don't know. Yeah. But it's for people who don't think watches are just a utilitarian device. It's actually a part of who they are in a big way. And it sounds like that's exactly what you got into when first you joined Fratello Magazine and then hopped over to Chrono 24 because of what you did at Fratello. Exactly. You can look back and connect the dots to where yeah. you are now, you know? And I mean, I'm still doing both. I'm still, I'm, my, my daily job is with Chrono 24 and my side job, if you will, is with Fratello Watches. And um, I'm lucky enough to have two jobs where both of them appreciate each other and allow me to, you know, to work for Chrono and also bring something home for Fratello and the other way around. And I think this is pretty unique. But yeah, one one step led to the next and the next to the third and so on. And and I and I ended up where I am right now. And and it's it's a very interesting, interesting journey. It's not even over yet. This episode of the Nonfiction Brand Podcast is brought to you by Nonfiction Brand Versity. It's a free Facebook group dedicated to the art and craft of personal branding. And we'd like to invite you. Just search Nonfiction Brand Versity on Facebook and ask to join. You're in, guaranteed. I can't wait to see you on campus. I, I really do want to point out that what you're doing is exactly what you can do when you understand what your true nonfiction brand is. You know, obviously, you've got an intellectual capability because you were doing difficult things or in depth, disciplined things in college. Well, all that stuff can apply to everything you're doing for Fratello and Chrono 24. So it's not like you went the wrong way. You just did it a different way. So you built skills and muscles that you can use very complementarily with where you are now with Chrono 24 and Fratello. Yeah, I think it's it's just, it's probably more complicated, the route that I took. You know, if you're majoring in law, then you become a lawyer. It's pretty straightforward. You finish school and then undergrad and graduate and boom. Same with economy or, or, or medical school. But I think that, you know, in my education with English, I got the, the understanding of the culture, of the language, of how to write an essay or, or write a story, read books, uh, contemporary American fiction, ethnic women writers in the U.S., all that stuff. That has nothing to do with watches. But as you said, that's just like, that's something that, that helps you develop those, those muscles that you might need and that, that, that are so versatile and eventually along the way you might need them. And I have to say that I, I've used most of them um, throughout my, my journey. Well, I can say right now that before we got on the Zoom call, I just, in doing my two minutes of research that I do before I go on a podcast episode, I was looking at your LinkedIn profile just to know where you have been and stuff like that. And then I took a look at Chrono24, which is, again, is a marketplace for watches. So there wasn't a whole lot of bolash there that I could find. But at Fratello Magazine, the first thing I hop into is a, it came out October 25th of 2019. And the title of it is Hot Take, The New Hamilton Khaki Pilot Shot NYC, Two Iconic American Brands, One Collaboration, and an Awesome Watch. And then there's a story, uh, and it's about this watch and the historical antecedents of the design and why we should care about Shot, the makers of the original motorcycle jacket, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, I'm seeing the historian in you. I'm seeing the English diploma. You know, I, I can see your English diploma in play. Yeah. And I can see your understanding of customer service from the hospitality industry in the fact that you're taking what they're telling you and then translating it into what you, the reader who doesn't know anything about this, needs to know. And you're kind of doing what any good writer does, which is you feed the information out one bit at a time following a narrative arc that by the end of it, you're going, gosh, I want one of these watches. I hope so. I mean, I hope that's the, the, that's the result of the article. I mean, we, I, I'm happy and I'm fortunate enough to have so many stories in Fratello watches. We, can, we have the freedom, the editorial freedom to cover pretty much whatever we want. And sometimes we have these, uh, these awesome brands like Hamilton who takes you and invites you to an event. And so last week I was in New York. I just came back actually uh, Tuesday morning. I was with them um, last week for the release of this collaboration. 
And uh, I mean, how cool is that, right? And, and yeah. a, an American watch brand, roots in, in the US, but now in Switzerland, collaborates with Shot, arguably the greatest leather jacket or, or, or jacket company in the world, this cool American brand who created jackets for Marlon Brando and Guns N' Roses and pretty much everyone. I mean, you walk, I, I was lucky enough to be in New Jersey in their, in their factory and you see the walls and man, it's just, just full of superstars from, from Jay-Z to Van Halen, whoever. And so they, you know, everybody wears a Shot jacket. And these two guys collaborate to make an awesome watch. And then they invite you and they say, hey, listen, we want you to come and we want you to, to, to write about that stuff and talk about us because we trust that you can put this message through the way your readers would understand. And eventually, this is the end, they're going to buy a watch. Or maybe not this watch, maybe another one, but a Hamilton and a shot jacket. And I, I just want to, again, I want to connect the dots for listeners. And I'm sure they're connecting the dots for themselves, but... I just want to put a, a spotlight on it to say, do you see what happened when Balash decided what he was doing was not completely, fully true to himself, his interests, and his loves and passions? He took a step away from a career that I'm sure you could have had the rest of your life, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So. And you would hate, well, maybe not hate, but just kind of live a mundane life, right? It's yes, it's I mean, it's it's, you know, it's very local. It's very static. You don't you're, you're in a hotel and then you don't move. Everybody comes to you. And I hated it. I wanted to go out. I wanted to see things. I wanted I wanted to be the guy who goes to the hotel and not the guy who welcomes the guy at the hotel, if it makes any sense to you. Oh, you know, I wanted to be sense. on the other side. I wanted to be the guy who's at this hotel and next week at that hotel. And of course, this life is now I'm painting a very fancy picture. It's not about that. It's like 10% or 50% traveling and, and 75, 80%, 85% sitting at home. But still, I wanted to be the guy who goes out and, and works with this brand and, and that brand and this event and that event, not the one who sits at the same hotel and today I'm going to organize the tables in a U shape and next week I'm going to organize the tables in a square. And you know, you were invited to New York for this launch because you had built your brand, Balash Ferenzi, the brand in the watch, fine wristwatch marketplace to the point where they said, yeah, you're legitimately someone we want to bring in. And the whole right. thing is maybe right now it's only 10% glamour, 90% sitting at home. But I seem to remember you telling me a story about being at the 24 hour uh, oh, yeah. race Le in Le Mans, yeah. sitting next to a guy who was kind of looking shabby and all that stuff, yeah. having a sandwich. And <laughs> you realize afterward it was Keanu Reeves. Yeah. So let me tell you, you got more than 10% of cool stuff going on in your life. <laughs> if you can yeah. be at Le Mans with Keanu Reeves and then in New York for the Hamilton shot release yeah. of this brand new watch. I mean, it's very, very cool. But just in terms of what this podcast is about, I just want to hammer home. Balash took a look at who he was, who he is, what he cares about, what he's passionate about. And then aligned his work life to match that rather than the opposite way, which is, well, I got a job. I guess I better learn to love it. And I'm sure maybe you could. Maybe someday you'd open up your own hotel someplace or something and maybe it'd be fantastic. But I think you're probably a whole lot happier being true to who you truly are. The completely you, completely true Balash Ferenzi brand. Absolutely. Writing for a watch magazine, of course, you can have an education in journalism, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a job right there, right? You can, you know, journalism is pretty much you're going to write about a car, you're going to write about an earthquake, you're going to write about whatever. Being specialized is, I think it's not easy. And I think we who are in the watch industry or any industry for that matter, let that be sports or cars or, or fashion, these guys are, I believe, are very lucky people because. Most of the time, according to my colleagues, when I look around in the watch industry, this is not only a job for them. This is their passion. This is their hobby. So to work for a watch publication, write about watches when your hobby or one of your hobbies is actually watches, it's a pretty awesome feeling. And of course, on the side or to have a, a job like Chrono24, which is a huge company, one of the, if not the biggest company in the used watch market is, um, is again, a big thing. And it's again, something that not everybody will have the chance of doing. So I'm kind of having the best of both worlds, pretty much working for Chrono24 and for Fratello in the watch industry, around the watch industry, when I'm actually someone who's really, really interested in watches. So that's my hobby. 
Hey, nonfiction branders. Did you know I wrote a book? Well, I did, and it's called Rotoma, the ROI of social media top of mind. I wrote it with my colleague Spencer X. Smith, and it's all about Rotoma, an acronym that means Return on Top of Mind Awareness. Best-selling author and NYU Stern School of Business professor Scott Galloway called it a book that starches the fluff from social media and helps managers allocate capital and find the unicorn among unicorns, ROI. And Chief Content Officer at Marketing Pro, Ann Handley said, This isn't just a practical way to think about the return on social media. It's also a spot-on, accurate way to reframe your social efforts. Check out all the five-star reviews on Amazon by searching Rotoma, R-O-T-O-M-A. Pick up your copy today and start building your personal, professional, and small business brand the Rotoma way. You mentioned earlier that you also take images. Yeah. So you're taking photography of the watches in in settings. Like I'm looking at one, I guess you posted this October 27th in 2017 about the, I'm hopefully I pronounce this right, Tissot T-Touch Expert Solar 2. Mm-hmm. It's hanging from the branch of a tree. Yes. And then it's on a fallen log and all that stuff. Did you take those photos? Yeah. So when you look at my articles, obviously you click on my name and then you see all the articles. 90% of the images um, that you see, I do them. And the reason is because we don't have, well, we have a photographer in-house, but he's in the Netherlands. Fratello Watches, a Fratello magazine is based in the Netherlands, but I'm in Germany, as you said, so I don't have a photographer with me. So from day one, I had to learn not only how to write an article for WordPress, but also to do the images and edit them and get the gear, get the camera, get the, the lens and whatnot. And you can see actually my first articles, the images are not really good, but in 2014, 15, but now in 18, 17, 18, 2019, I think I'm getting step by step better in in photography. And the reason we do this is because we believe at Fratello Magazine that the users or the readers, they care about our own images and not about press releases because you can see press photos everywhere. But when you see this watch in the flesh or in the wild, as we say, hanging from a branch or, or in a swimming pool, then it's basically you see the actual product. And so this is why we do as much as we can. This is we, why we do our own images. And the watch you saw when uh, we were in San Diego, that watch was also a review watch that I got from the brand from Armin Ström. I'm going to give them a shout out because they're awesome people in, in Bilbien in Switzerland. They also send me the watch so I can wear it, try it, take my own images and then publish it. And then, and that's then an opinion or an opinion, opinionated piece that is 100% based on my experience with the product. Which then turns into a valuable article to the Fratello magazine reader, because they know this is not a press release that's been retyped. Absolutely. It's truly a user's review. Yes. There again, you're aligning yourself with your value and truth to create a more valuable thing, right? Yes, absolutely. That's what this is all about. So how cool is that? You are in the industry that you're passionate about. You get to write using your English background, and then you get to develop an entirely different but complementary skill set with taking photographic images and building your eye, building your technique, getting better and better and better. And let me tell you something, the killer capability for anybody who wants to be active in social media is developing still photography ability. And by the way, you don't have to have a fancy camera. Just use your iPhone or your high quality digital camera on an Android phone, and you can take amazing shots if you develop your ability. And then if you develop the ability to do video as well, you're a one-man wrecking crew when it comes to getting all that content done for your social media feeds. If you can do it yourself, you're not beholden to anybody. You're not waiting for anybody. If you want to get up in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. to get the edit done so you can post it at 9 a.m., you can do that. And so I am passionate about getting people to understand, don't wait for someone else to do it for you. Learn how to do it yourself. And Balash, it sounds like you learned that lesson a long time ago. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, I had help from, from our photographer, Beth, um, from Fratello magazine, but obviously I had to, you know, play with the camera and play with the settings. If you have an iPhone and maybe you have a, a gimbal, and maybe you have a MacBook, that's all you need. Cause the, 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 the iPhone is, you know, the technology, you have the camera, you have photos there, you can do videos. The gimbal kind of gives you a, a steady, steady hand when it comes to the shots. And then you can edit pretty much anything on, on a MacBook. You know, the thing is, once you have that, you have everything that you need to create your videos or your images or your, your vlog, video, cast, whatever you want to do. 
Well, I just want to point to one of the places that people can follow you to get an idea of what Balash is all about. Now, to an American speaking English, <laughs> spelling your name has been a constant <laughs> thorn in my side. <laughs> but I will say that you can follow Balash on Instagram at Ferenzi Baz, F E R E N C Z I B A Z S. Let me say that again. F-E-R-E-N-C-Z-I-B-A-Z-S. And you'll be able to take a look at his Instagram feed. And the funny thing is, it doesn't have a bunch of shots of your lunch or a drink <laughs> at sunset or, you know, your dog or anything like that. There's a bunch of watches there in a bunch of different settings. There are a couple of shots of drinks and things like that. But right. mostly it's, it's watches, 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 watches. Why? Because you're telling us, if you know me for one thing, know me for this, and that is fine chronometers that are typically handmade, Swiss-oriented, or Swiss-manufactured, and muy expensivo. Not necessarily, but yeah. I mean, I, I guess, you know, with my Instagram, I never really had a plan. I just started posting what I liked. And again, if you scroll down and you see that I, I posted a lot of travel stuff in, in the past, but when I started to get into, into the industry and I started to write more and more, it was a, a very obvious and easy way to plug my, my work on Fratello. It's, it's also good because it's like a visual diary. I call it my visual diary of, of watches. So whenever a, a conversation comes up about a watch and I know that I had the watch, I'm like, oh, just give me a sec. Let me, uh, I had this watch in uh, 2017. Check it out. Here's on. I don't have the picture anymore, but I have it on Instagram. Right. So it's kind of, you know, how I keep track of, of things. And I have your, you know, I have a lot of stories. I put up a lot of stories when I travel. But when it comes to posts, I'm, I'm really selective of, of what to put up. And I don't really like to put my, my private stuff there, but more about travel, watches, cars, things that I enjoy, but first and foremost, watches, obviously. Again, I'm going to refer back to an episode I just recorded and released with Don Stanley. We were talking about that, about social media, especially for people who want to build a personal brand in a meaningful way via social media. And he talked about the fact that there's kind of this sweet spot, which I call uh, the Goldilocks mama bear position, which is baby bear is too much information about your new tattoo and the fact that your girlfriend broke up with you. Papa bear is someone who doesn't talk and doesn't share and doesn't do anything on social media. There's that middle zone that is just right where you're sharing of yourself, but not everything. Because let me no. tell you, I don't care about everything. I don't care about the traffic ticket you got today or the fact that you spilled some coffee on your shoe. But the fact that you ran into someone with a one of a kind watch and you, you know, maybe took a photo of it on their wrist or that you finally found that one specific model that you've been seeking forever. If I'm into what you're into, I'm going to find that incredibly interesting Thank you. and then find you incredibly valuable. Right. Thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, I hope so. That's that's the goal. Balash, we're going to talk more in the second episode about your day job, which is a content developer, coordinator, etc. for Chrono 24. But we're at the end of this episode, so it's time for me to wrap it up. Again, I'm DP Knuton for the Nonfiction Brand Podcast and Nonfiction Brand Versity, which I'd love for you to join. Just go to Facebook, search Nonfiction Brand Versity, ask to join, and you are in. And he is... Balash Ferenczi from Germany, Fratello Magazine, and Chrono 24. We'll talk to you next week with an all new episode and a continued conversation from this week. I'll talk to you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>